Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another Groundwork for Success video. Today we're standing here with two-year-old Maisie. She's working her way through our Groundwork program. And uh, today she's going to help me show you guys the next step in our program. So we've done all the episodes up until now. So the next step is what I call the follow the feel exercises. So there's a couple minor, minor exercises in between. Um, that's all part of the desensitization. Um, so by now we would have desensitized her to a girth rope. Um, I'm not, I can't really show you that with any of our horses right now because all of them have done that exercise really well. They've been saddled, so they're not going to have any issue with that exercise. So I'll have to wait till we have somebody else come in and then we'll kind of backtrack to that episode. Um, and I'll number it accordingly so that it drops right into the order of the episodes. But she's going to show us the next step and that's the follow the feel exercises. So there's three of them. Uh, one of, uh, a couple of them we've already touched on uh, in other episodes just because they're a part of that task. So our follow the feel exercises are lateral flexion, uh, both sides, uh, what I like to call follow the feel around, and I'll show you that with her today, and then uh, the step up and step back. So the step up and step back we've kind of already done. Uh, we'll do it again with her in this video. Uh, just to reiterate that exercise, and then I'll show you the other two exercises and how I go about introducing them. Uh, she's done a little bit of the lateral flexion, but she hasn't really done the other two follow the feel exercises yet. So technically the sending exercise right there can be considered a type of follow the feel because they do, they do have to step up into that pressure. But for today, we're not really going to talk about that one. So I'm just going to get her to step up. She hasn't been worked with in a couple weeks because I had a sprained ankle, so we'll see how she does. So I always start with the easiest exercise, and that is the step up and step back. So we're just going to shake our lead a little bit, get her to back up. There we go, very nice. So she's got a very nice feel when it comes to backing up. She's willingly stepping out of my space. It's not taking that much feel on the halter. It's pretty light wiggle. A little bit of a cluck if I have to, so right there she's not, so I up my energy a little bit. But then when she does back up, it's nice and calm, it's nice even steps. We're getting some backup. So to ask her to step forward, I just kind of hold the lead between my fingers and just lightly ask her to step up. When she does start stepping up, I give her that lead back. So it's all about them following that very light feel on the halter. So right there, I just and I just kind of feed the rope through my hand as if I'm reeling her up like a fishing pole. So I'll come closer to the camera here so you guys can see that reeling action a little bit better. Because I don't even I don't even close my hand when I do that. So again, I'm just kind of shaking the lead, getting her to back up out of my space. The lead's just kind of bouncing on my hand like this. I don't even have my hand closed. I'm gonna get her to go a little bit more. Get a little more aggressive there. And then I'll kind of show you. So I just take my hand like this, and I just let the little bit of tension on the lead across my glove, and let that be the feel that I want her to step up off of. So right there, and then I just kind of feed through, and I kind of close my fingers ever so slightly around that lead if she hangs off that halter a little bit, and I ask her to step right up. So she's always been pretty light that way. Some horses you're going to have to do a little bit more. If they don't want to step up off that halter, don't get into the habit 
of wanting to lean on them. Because if I step like this and I just hold that pressure there, see, she doesn't like, she took one little step there, but she's not going to really step up into that. Her instinct is going to be to brace. If you have to unlock their front end and get them to step forward, either get them to take a step to the side, or if you're gonna take pressure, you take it and give. They can't lean on you the second you give it back. So again, I'm gonna take that pressure, give it back. There, see, and then right away she's like, hey, I know what you're asking me to do, I'm supposed to step up. So that way you don't get into the habit of, of getting into a tug of war with them because you're never gonna win that tug of war. Even with a mini, you have to be a pretty big person to be able to outmuscle a mini. So anything her size, bigger, smaller, like it doesn't matter, I'm not gonna win that. So I wanna keep her light. And the lighter she is on the ground through the halter, we can transition that into the snaffle bit when we start doing the ground driving. And it's all gonna transition to under saddle work as well. The softer the horse is, the less likely you're going to end up in a situation where you need to bail off the horse. Because if she's soft, even if she does kind of hump up a little bit and want to buck, or if she wants to bolt, because that level of softness is there, I should be able to just bring her head around, flex her, soften that body back up, and then we just continue on like nothing happened. Usually the horses that get into those big panic moments where all hell is breaking loose is usually because they're not soft beforehand. So I'm just going to hold that there. I'm going to start feeding that through my hand, and there we go. See? That kind of vibration on that nose band asks her to step right up. And always when they get back up to you, I always like to love up on them as much as I can because one, that's more desensitizing if you have a spookier horse that doesn't really want to be in your space. And second, is it rewards her for stepping up so lightly. All righty. So the next one is lateral flexion, and in my opinion, they kind of have to do the lateral flexion before we do the follow the feel around. So I'm just going to kind of bring her over here and reposition a little bit so that you guys can hopefully see what's about to happen. So she's only been asked to do lateral flexion a couple times, so we're still working on it. I always just kind of fold my lead in half there, take a feel on her head. And I kind of stand about where my stirrup would be because that's going to be about where my hand's going to be when I ask her this from the saddle. And you're basically just going to try and tip their nose towards you. And always start with the smallest ask. So my pressure's really light and I'm just waiting for her to tip her nose ever so slightly in my direction. So right there. And then I'm going to ask again. Holding that until she kind of gives her nose a little bit. She's kind of falling asleep on me so I'm just going to kind of Gently rock that nose band on her nose. Bump, 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 bump until I get a little bit more of an acknowledgement that I'm trying to ask her to do something here. Bump, 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 bump. And I'm just gonna keep rocking like this there until she gives me a little bit. And then we're slowly gonna work until she lateral flexes all the way around. So some horses, I find that just placing my hand here on their neck kind of supports that shoulder enough that I can ask her to come all the way around without getting too much movement in the hind end. Now, if she has to move her hind end because she gets really stiff or locked up, I'm gonna let her move her hind end. It's a lot safer for moving her hind end around. And right there, she's hanging on me. You can see how she's kind of tipping her nose opposite direction there. She's got her cheek coming towards me, but she's kind of tilting the rest of her head so that her nose is going away. So I'm just gonna hold this and I'm gonna wait for her to soften up. And this lateral flexion, you could stand here for hours just waiting for the horse to do something. I'm not going to get harder with my cue. If anything, I'm just going to kind of rock like I was doing and kind of bump her nose, make her pay attention to the fact that I'm asking her to do something. And right there, she's slowly coming towards me, but she's still leaning on my hand. So I'm just going to hold that there now and wait for her to soften. And I might bring it up towards my shoulder to ask for a little bit more flexion, but this, the amount of pressure on her nose is not changing. There we go. She gave me just a little bit there, so I'm going to give it back to her. So the point with the lateral flexion is until they actually gain some suppleness through their neck and shoulder, which at this stage, she's too, uh, she's bum high, she's really going through a big growth spurt, she's thickening up right now. So these muscles in her neck and shoulder, she hasn't ever used those muscles before from a training standpoint, not yet. So I got to give her a chance to build some condition in those muscles before she's going to be able to do this as soft as some of the other horses can. There we go. 
always give that back right away. The second they give their nose, give it back. And then eventually you can work them all the way around and you can probably hold that there and they'll even start to uh, hold them themselves in that position. So right there, she's kind of hanging on me. So bump, 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 bump on that nose. I feel like she might move her hip here if I keep bumping, but I'm gonna let her do that if she needs to. There we go, there we go, there. And give it all back. So that way, that time she actually gave me a little bit. Uh, she softened up, and then as she softened, she actually tipped her nose even more towards my hand. So that's why you want to kind of throw it all back to them, give them that release, and we'll try again. And then eventually, as she gets more broke to this particular exercise, we will do it off the snaffle bit before we start ground driving. And we'll do the follow the feel around, which we'll show here in a second, off the snaffle as well. But she's just learning these exercises, so for now, I want to, there we go, I want to give her the opportunity to learn the exercise with a tool like her rope halter that she's already used to. If I teach her that now, in a way that she's already used to, by the time we go into the snaffle bit, she'll understand that pressure already. People always wonder how we get our horses to do all these obstacles and 10 rides, or get our horses so quiet and calm and willing, and that's because we teach them the answers to our questions before we even ask those questions. Each little step that I do is building her up for a bigger ask later on. So right now, it doesn't even seem like I'm really doing much. I could spend three hours literally just asking her to tip her nose to me, but this will build up immensely once we get under saddle. Yeah, I'm just gonna hold that, wait for her to give me a little bit more. Holding, she's kind of falling asleep on me there. I'm watching her eyes kind of go droopy on me, so she's not really, there we go. I'm going to step back a little bit more towards her flank so that I have a little more room to move here. There we go. And she's leaning on me, so holding, holding. I'm bringing my left hand up toward, there we go, up towards her withers, and I'm just waiting for her to respond. So the more I give her her head back there, see? She's already getting a hell of a lot lighter. And I'm kind of at her wither with my left hand. My right hand's just on the other side of her wither to more support my balance if she moves. And I'm just, there we go, waiting for her to respond. And then again, pick up, bring my left hand up towards her withers. Perfect, and let go. So hopefully you guys can see the changes in how light she's getting off this side. And then as we go, I'm not going to necessarily build on that today because this is the first time her doing this exercise or the first couple times. Um, so I'm not going to necessarily get her to come around around today, but we'll build on that. It's all about building the softness in little stages. So I'm going to come to this side, same thing. Right there, she kind of flinched a little bit at the lead flying over her, sh her wither there, so I'm just going to rub it back and forth. She's got a couple bite marks from some of the older horses on this side of her body, so I think she was getting picked on a little bit. So I'm just going to take some time and love up on her on this side. Let her know that the, ho the other horses might beat up on her on this side, but I'm not going to. It's not necessarily a bad thing. She was getting kind of cocky in her little two-year-old filly stage, so it's not a bad thing her being out with the other horses to learn some herd manners. Sometimes I'll even take on the top of their, like the crest of their neck where the mane comes out, where they like to mutually groom each other. And I'll just take my hands and I'll just kind of massage that as if it's another horse kind of mutually grooming. And that really seems to help build their confidence. I can see her nose twitching a little bit. She's actually not necessarily like minding that at all. So that's right on top of her withers with both hands. Just to let her know that nothing that I'm gonna do with her is going to be unsafe or scary. She might think it will be, but I'm trying to keep everything nice and calm so that she can learn. So same thing, I'm gonna, my left hand's just gonna kinda be on the uh, left side of her wither there just to kinda, it's more to support myself. If she starts moving, I can stay with her, especially cause my ankle's not 100% just yet. So same thing, I'm gonna use my right hand, it's on the lead, and I'm just gonna bring it towards my chest to start with for a slight lateral flexion. And right there, she's leaning, so bump, 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 bump. Just kind of wiggle that nose band on her nose. Wait for her to give that nose. Waiting for her to give that nose. Still waiting. So right there, because she's kind of leaning away, I'm going to put my, my left hand up on the middle of her neck, kind of where you'd give a vaccine. Just going to kind of support her a little bit there. And give that nose back. 
I'll turn her. I can get one step of her in there. So that way you guys can see a little bit better what I'm doing. So my hand was just here, and I'm bringing this hand, my right hand towards my chest. There, I'm just waiting for that little bit of a nose tip. So right there, kind of bump, bump, bump. Just using that hand to kind of help her balance this shoulder and neck. It's almost like a massage technique if they have a really tight neck or muscle knot there. You can kind of almost lean into it as you're pulling their, as you're asking them to come this way and help them release that a little bit as well. There. So ideally, I want her to not only bring her nose towards me or her whole head towards me and give that lateral flexion, but if she even gives me a little bit of that vertical flexion by tucking her chin in a little bit, I'm going to reward that as well, even if all I got was the vertical flexion, and then eventually we'll keep, we'll keep building on that. So now that I've kind of asked her to come this way a little bit with more of an open rein, I'm going to bring my right hand towards the withers and ask for more, to, more of the lateral flexion. So right there, I'm going to kind of bump, bump a little bit. She's going to start moving on me. You can feel it in her withers. So right here, I'm going to let her move, let her reposition herself if she has to. And I'm still just going to hold that pressure there and wait for her to respond. So right there was some nice vertical flexion, but she completely pulled against my hand for the lateral. So I'm just holding and right there giving it all back. And then once I can release that, I'm going to ask her to step back up to where we were so you guys can see what we're doing. So they're always going to have a side that they're more stiff on. So obviously this is her, her uh, stiffer side. So that means we want to develop this side even better so that hopefully when we finally get on her, that everything is relatively even when it comes to the softness on each uh, on each side. So again, bringing my hand towards her withers, right hand towards her withers. Just gonna kind of wait there, bump, 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 bump. There we go, a little bit. I'm gonna pick up right away, there we go. Reward that little try, pick up, hold, hold. I'm waiting for something to happen here. There we go, and give it all back. So that's basically the lateral flexion, and you're just going to slowly start building on that until they can come right around. Holding, there we go. I'm going to pick up right away and ask for a little bit more. Holding, there, perfect. So eventually you want to get so that like two fingers on the lead, a finger and a thumb, you can just pick up, bring over here, and then hopefully, bump, 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 that would be enough softness to bring her nose right to her shoulder. There we go. So she'll need a little bit more development with that because like I said, she hasn't used any of these muscles. But eventually the goal is so that she'll be able to softly, just like cutting a knife through some soft butter, she'll be able to come right around to almost where your foot and stirrup will be and she'll wait there until you give her any other cues. And that's the start of all of our body control and softness when we get under saddle. So the last step for the follow the feel exercises is the follow the feel around. So all the desensitizing you've done with the stick and string, any ropes, and the lateral flexion, the step up, step back, yielding shoulder, yielding hip, all of that comes into play for this exercise. So what I want to do is start with her going towards the left because that's her uh, softer side at the moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the lead. I'm actually going to go on the other side of her neck, bring it up here. I'm just going to kind of slide it all the way back until I can get around her hip. And once I get around her hip, I'm only going to have the end of the lead. So I'm just going to, as I step back away from her to give her that space, I'm going to ask her to not only yield her hip, but I do expect her to kind of follow that feel around, which is why we call it that exercise, with her nose. So this is the very beginning of learning to follow their nose when they're going somewhere and also how to move their other body parts out of the way. So this is a uh, 12 foot lead. I prefer a little bit 14 or 16, sometimes even lunge lines for this exercise, depending on how hard they're gonna be. This was just what happened to be attached to her halter when I grabbed her. So I'm gonna bring it around. And because this is a very short little bit left, I don't wanna stand here and start pulling because if she gets locked up and if she happens to rear or kick, I'm in a strike zone. And, or if she rears, I'm, I'm smushed. So I'm going to take this end of the lead and I'm going to start walking away from her and ask her to tip that nose towards me and yield that hip out of the way. So right there I'm just going to hold, 
So she did the lateral flexion beautifully, but I want her to start moving that butt. So I'm gonna let her right there problem solve on her own and bring that all the way around. There we go, beautiful. So again, same with the lateral flexion, you wanna take that pressure there, you wanna hold it there, not get any stronger or lighter, and just stand back out of the way and let them kind of problem solve their way through that exercise. Because at the end of the day, she's responsible for her own feet. No matter how much I would love to be able to carry them, I can't, I'm not strong enough. And when we're riding around, she has to be responsible for her own feet. I can tell her where to go, but she needs to be responsible for where she's putting them. So that's why I hold this, and I'm just gonna stand over here and let her figure this out as to how to move. So right there, she's lateral flexing beautifully. She's nice and soft. She's kind of looking for an answer. So I'm just gonna hold that there until she kicks her butt towards kind of into this open space. So right there, I'm just gonna hold, hold, hold. There we go. So she figured it out, she yielded. And that's why I stand back here. Because if I don't, I would have gotten stepped on or kicked or possibly if she was to have that really dramatic reaction to where she rears because she gets stuck with that pressure. That's why I stand over here, you're out of the way. If she was to really get in a wreck, I would let her go and you just simply catch her again and you try again. It's not worth getting yourself hurt, it's not worth getting them hurt. So one more time to the left here, and then we'll try her harder side. And some of these horses get real sneaky by this point and they'll already start flexing before the rope's even in position. So again, I'm gonna hold that pressure. I'm just gonna stand back here. So already she's lighter on her head. I'm gonna let her figure out how to yield that hip. And I might even step over this way towards her shoulder to give me a little bit more leverage against her hip to ask her to yield this way. Right there, there we go. And just as she starts turning around, I give her a little bit of that pressure back because I want to reward her for trying to find that right answer and giving really nicely to the lead. So now we're going to go the other way. So I'm going to take the lead to the right side of her neck and we're going to make her yield her hind end towards the left here, which will be flexing towards the right. So this is going to be her harder side. So I'm going to step back, make sure I give her lots of space. Beautiful lateral flexion, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So that level of softness is exactly what I'm looking for when I do this exercise. Why is she so soft doing this? Well, one, she's naturally pretty soft through her head, through her head and neck. The second is we've already taught her how to step up into the halter pressure with the step up and step back. We've taught her the lateral flexion. So you saw how nicely she gave to that lateral flexion. And we've already taught her how to yield her hip. So this is just a matter of putting those exercises together in something a little more difficult, but she already knows how to respond to these, these questions. And that's why she's able to do it so quietly and so softly. So again, I'm gonna come all the way back. And I'm just gonna hold that pressure there, step to the side. Beautiful, beautiful. And then we might even get a step more advanced and I'm gonna ask her to step right up. So when she yields all the way around, I step back and kind of draw her towards me. We'll try that again here. I'm gonna bring her the other way so that we have a little bit more camera space. So you guys can see what I mean by adding that level of difficulty. So I'm gonna get her to yield this way. Yielding this way, beautiful. And then I'm just gonna kind of step back and draw her towards me and start feeding that line through my hand again like we were doing with the step up and step back. Now I'm going to come around to this other side, I'm going to get her to yield to the right, and same thing, I'm going to draw her up towards the camera. Beautiful, drawing up, start feeding that through my hands, beautiful, and whoa. <laughs> so that is the follow the feel exercises, pretty simple step in our groundwork program, but these exercises will build her up towards the ground driving and any uh, rain work that we do under saddle. So as she gets more advanced with these, we'll do one or two more sessions with these exercises off the halter. And then when she has her bridle on, we're going to do those same exercises off the snaffle bit, which we'll come back to in a later episode once we, uh, once we get to that stage. There's a couple more episodes between the snaffle bit stage of this exercise and today. So stay tuned to the channel. Uh, we will be back with the next exercise. And huge thanks to Maisie for being such a superstar for today's video.